Hello everyone, it's Barnaby, it's Spurred On, it's Monday, that means your weekly dose of the five things we learnt, and this time from the Liverpool match, which of course finished Liverpool 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1 in the 5.30pm late Saturday kickoff. I was at Anfield, unfortunately I didn't get a ticket with the Spurs away fans, so I was in with a lot of Scandinavian Liverpool fans, and I have to say... And I've accused Spurs fans of being like this in the past, certainly not this season, but Liverpool fans were very quick to get on their, te their teams back. Very fickle indeed. They're not totally happy with the way things are going on down there at the moment. Obviously, they love their manager, they love Jurgen Klopp, but they were really on their players' back straight away from the kickoff almost. So I was very surprised about that. But it's not about Liverpool, it's about Tottenham Hotspur. So let's get started with the five things I felt we learned from the Liverpool game. The first thing that I felt we learned is all about Hugo Lloris. It's not really that we learnt it, we know that he's totally world class, but he had potentially his best game of the season against Liverpool on Saturday. Certainly in the first half it was a bit like the Alamo, shots were coming at him from all areas of the pitch and there was a couple of things uh, especially I want to talk about. Firstly, um, Adam Lallana's kind of scuffed volley shot on the turn, that was such an incredible save. Uh, as you may know, I've done a bit of goalkeeping in my, side, in my time. There's literally no cues whatsoever in terms of how he thinks Lallana is going to shoot, whether he's going to connect well. And the fact that he didn't connect well and he scuffed it straight into the ground meant that Hugo's first movement was kind of to stop and then he has to go again and somehow claw it out from the right-hand corner uh, of the goal. Just an absolutely unbelievable save. Not many keepers would have uh, used their legs well enough and got enough spring to make that save. So that was absolutely incredible. Kept us in the game at that point. Also, the other one was when Daniel Sturridge was cleaned through. Uh, if you've seen it on the highlights, you'll see that Kevin Vimmer, who has had a fantastic season since he's come in for Jan Vertonghen, was a little bit slow uh, in coming up uh, alongside Toby Alderweireld to keep the offside line. And that's how Sturridge got cleaned through. And Hugo did an amazing thing. Sturridge was clean through and what you would have seen from pretty much 99% of all keepers in that situation, they would have rushed out, spread themselves and dived at the feet of Daniel Sturridge. Hugo looked like he was going to do that. His first motion was to come forward, but then he thinks, no, I'm going to stop. And he actually takes a step back and he kind of says to Sturridge, go on then, beat me from there. And it kind of confused Daniel Sturridge, I think, and that's why he ended up just hitting it straight at Hugo, got a good leg on it and it got away from the danger area. Two fantastic saves, but... They weren't the only two. He was absolutely majestic. Also, I thought his distribution was better on Saturday than it has been recently. And we're just so lucky to have him. We're lucky to have him as our captain. He leads from the, he leads from the front or the back in, real, in, in reality. But he's not kind of a loud shouter baller leader. He's more of a Ledley King, kind of leads by example. Just an absolutely fantastic asset for the club. He signed a new deal about a year and a half ago, five-year deal. Long may it continue. If we make it into the Champions League, he can lead us to Champions League glory next season or... Let's hope into the, into the later rounds anyway. I'm not sure if we're quite ready to win the Champions League yet, but who knows? Anyway, so the first thing that I felt we learned was about Hugo Lloris's brilliant form. Absolutely amazing. Second thing I wanted to talk about uh, that I felt I learned about uh, against Liverpool, Carl Walker. Now, I think Carl Walker's had his best ever season in a Spurs shirt. Uh, he's improving all the time. Got in the England team, did all right for England, set up a goal uh, for Jamie Vardy in the England team. Saturday was a real test for Carl Walker. He was up against Philip Coutinho. I'd never seen Philip Coutinho play in the flesh before. He was absolutely majestic. He was incredible. And Carl Walker was given a real run around. So all I want to talk about is I think Carl Walker is continually improving. However, when it comes to playing against the absolute best, and I would put Philip Coutinho in that world-class bracket, Kyle still has a few things to learn. There were a few times where he definitely dived in too quickly. Coutinho at one point lobbed it over his head and Kyle, next thing I saw, he was on the floor and he was kind of punching the ground. He knew that he got too tight to him. With a player like that, Kyle, I think, has to just sit off a little bit and say, go on then, beat me on the outside. Because Kyle Walker's quick enough to deal with anyone. But Coutinho didn't really let... Uh, Carl didn't really seem like he knew which way Coutinho was going to go. There was the other time where he got to the byline and whizzed it across the front. That could easily have been a goal. And Carl just wasn't really stopping Coutinho from doing his stuff. This will come in time. Carl Walker's still young himself. I think he's like 25. Uh, still a lot to learn, especially defensively. You, you, keep, you continue to learn as you get into your late 20s. And I think he's already a fantastic fullback, but he will continue to grow into an even better player. And I actually think, even though he didn't have the best game against Coutinho and Liverpool, 
Performances like that will end up helping him more than hindering him because he will learn, he'll watch it back, he'll know what he has to do next time, how he has to stop players of that talent. If he wants to play for England in the Euros, he'll be coming up against players of that quality game after game and he needs to know how he's going to deal with it. If I were him, I hate to say this because he's an ex-Woolwich player, but if I were him, I would look at how Ashley Cole developed his game when he first started playing for England. It got to a stage when whenever they play Portugal, Ashley Cole had Ronaldo in his pocket. Cole should take a look at how good Ashley Cole was back in those days and he could become a very similarly excellent fullback. So the second thing that I felt we learned was all about Carl Walker's continued improvement but still has some way to go. Uh, third thing that I felt we learned, uh, not a surprise, Harry Kane, an absolutely amazing finish. I was actually speaking to a Liverpool fan yesterday about it and he said that he thinks if Harry Kane stays fit he could become the greatest England striker of all time and that's coming from a Liverpool fan. Let's face it, they've got Daniel Sturridge who you know, he was poor again, I thought, on Saturday. He was poor for England last week. Daniel Sturridge, though, you know, when he gets on the pitch, usually he's a fantastic finisher, uh, very composed, fantastic striker. He did set up the goal with some lovely little movement, but I think Harry Kane completely outshone him. And I just think it's amazing to hear from fans of other clubs how high, uh, how high up they regard Harry Kane in terms of the pecking order, not just English strikers, but European strikers. Fantastic season he's having. Uh, he's now the record uh, goal scorer in the Premier League for Spurs in a season, uh, beating Jurgen Klinsmann and Jermaine Defoe and Gareth Bale. I think I'd, they had 21. I think Gareth Bale's now on 22. Uh, it might be 23. But still improving all the time and just the work he puts in. And the other thing that really impresses me, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Harry Kane had a few chances in the first half and they were in his favoured position where he's on the right side of the box and whip it bottom left. His touch wasn't quite there, he seemed a bit jaded, seemed a bit tired, but what is so incredible about him, he just keeps going, he keeps getting into the positions, keeps making chances for himself, and you just know, one time, it'll happen, and that was an unbelievable finish. Not just the finish though, the way he rolled the defender again, and there was nowhere to aim at, and he actually hit it, kind of with his instep, so it swerved a little bit away from Simon Mignolet, uh, which is just an incredible finish, right in the side, side netting. Fantastic, and we all just went completely mad. I did it on the inside because I was in the Liverpool end. But the Spurs fans are loving it. Everyone just talking about what a fantastic finish that, that is. I think he's nailed on for the golden boot now pretty much. Jamie Vardy stopped scoring. scoring. I don't think, I, I kind of thought, I wondered if Aguero would get a hat-trick against Bournemouth. He didn't. I think it looks like it's going to be Harry Kane. And maybe he'll be in there with a shot of player of the year as well. Very, very interesting. I guess a, a few Leicester fans, uh, a few Leicester players will be up for that as well. Uh, so third thing I felt we learned was all about Harry Kane. Continued good form. Second thing I want to talk about I felt we learned. Moussa Dembele absolutely back to his best. He was a colossus. Players were bouncing off him. It was embarrassing the amount of times Liverpool were getting three or four uh, players around him. They were just bouncing off him. Back to his absolute best, I thought, against Liverpool. I really feel with Moussa Dembele. He saves his best performances for the biggest games. He absolutely loves it. Arsenal at the Emirates, he was absolutely outstanding. Liverpool, he was incredible. And that's really important because obviously we've got Man United coming up. We've got Chelsea later in the season. We're going to need Moussa to be at his absolute best. He didn't seem to pick up any knocks uh, the weekend as well. So long may it continue that he stays fit. He does seem to pick up a quite a few knocks, Moussa Dembele. Not surprised, everyone's kicking him all the time. But to me, right now, that £15 million we spent on him from Fulham a few years ago looks like an absolute steal. He's 28 coming into his 29th year in his absolute prime. We can get a good two, three years out of Moussa Dembele alongside Eric Dyer in central midfield. No wonder we're so hard to beat. We've only lost four games in the league this season, I think, because that central midfield spine is just so strong. Uh, and of course, because of Toby Alderweireld and Hugo at the back. But fantastic season for Moussa. Long may it continue. Hopefully we'll get another Moussa Dembele in in the summer so that he can have you know, his namesake there as well. And just let's enjoy Moussa Dembele playing his absolute best. I'm looking forward to seeing him play for Belgium in the Euros as well. I think they could have a really strong tournament. Just love how Moussa's playing at the moment. So the fourth thing that I felt we learned from the Liverpool match, Moussa Dembele back to his best. The fifth thing that I want to talk about in terms of what we learned from the, uh, the Liverpool match is pressing against pressing. We've drawn twice with Liverpool in the league this season. Both times they were under Jurgen Klopp. The first one at White Hart Lane was his first game for Liverpool. And he's really got them pressing high and uh, uh, getting two or three men around the ball at all times. And that, of course, is how Poch likes to play for us as well. And it's no surprise to me at all that we've drawn with them twice because two very similar styles of play, kind of cancelling each other out a lot of the time. We were very high up the field pressing on them when Sacco had the ball and we made him make a few mistakes. I feel like we're a bit further down the line in terms of how our players have uh, attuned to that philosophy. Uh, but I think Liverpool next season will be a much improved team. I think Klopp will get his players in that he wants and he will get a good pre-season under their belts. They seemed a bit more tired than us at the back end, probably because they're not quite so used to playing that pre high pressing game. But when it comes to playing teams like that, 
Dortmund were similar. I think if we'd played our best team against Dortmund, it might have been a similar thing. They, they were very good. They might still have beaten us. But that kind of pressing against pressing often results in stalemates. It was a fascinating tactical game. It really was. I felt we could have won it. Ericsson's free kick at the end. We had a few chances, but equally they could have run it too. One all seemed like a bit of a fair result in the end. I wasn't too disappointed. Obviously, I'm gutted now because Leicester won yesterday. Seven points does seem like it's probably too much to handle. But let's be realistic, guys. If we get a top three finish, we should still aim to try and do that. Obviously, if Leicester slip up, we need to keep getting our results. I have us in our predictions. Uh, I had us in our predictions to draw against Liverpool, and we did, and win the two games before that. So my predictions are kind of coming true for Spurs, but they're not really for Leicester. I had Leicester to draw against Crystal Palace and to draw against Southampton. So they're about four points ahead of where I expected them to be. So it's looking very unlikely that they are going to slip up now. But we still need to aim to A, finish above Arsenal, and B, finish in the top three so we get straight into the Champions League next season. That will allow us to get a better standard of player in the summer if we're looking to spend a bit of money and to just go straight into that group stage. How good will it be to have Champions League football back at the lane? Those nights back a few years ago were fantastic where we turned over into Milan, uh, when we had Milan down there as well, Real Madrid. Let's have some more of that. Let's not be disappointed if we don't win the title. It's been an incredible season. The boys are young. They will continue to improve next season. I'm not throwing it away yet. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's looking unlikely. Anyway, the, the fifth thing I wanted to talk about was our pressing play, but also going into it's still been a great season. It was a decent result of the weekend. Let's keep working. Let's turn Man United over next week and see what happens from there. Because let's face it, Leicester have got a difficult game away at Sunderland. Sam Allardyce will have them bang up for that one. Let's hope they can get something back. Uh, out of that game, maybe take it to four points if we can turn over Manchester United, which won't be easy anyway. Uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you thought of the five things video in the comments box below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Keep supporting the boys. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barnby for Spurred on outside Anfield. It finished Liverpool 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. I've just done a lot of fan cams. Check them out. Um, there's a feeling of deflation uh, amongst the fans. I personally don't share it. 